Four, two, three, four. Run up your engine! Paul Fortuna. Hey, Scotty, what are your thoughts on tires being filled with nitrogen as opposed to regular air? Okay, that's one of the biggest all-time scams they've tried to pull in the last decade. Realize the air you breathe is already almost 80% nitrogen, which is inert, right? All they're doing is removing that other 20% or so to make it almost 100% nitrogen. Now, they do that on airplanes and stuff because the airplanes go way up in the sky and it gets really cold and it doesn't affect the pressure of the tires that much because it's more inert, things like that. And then, you know, when you land in an airplane, you hear the kick, that's the tires, and they go from cold to hot real fast. So, it's great for them. For you, it's pretty much a total waste of time. I'm also a professional mechanic. I always get these sales guys trying to sell me. We can sell you this nitrogen generator for thousands of dollars you can fill your customers tires with nitrogen all it does is it takes everything else out of the air and just put nitrogen you don't need it it's just stupid some race cars do it because it stays a better temperature for normal driving if you're not driving 200 miles an hour don't throw your money away putting nitrogen in your tires it's just another sales scam they try to pull on people do not MSG <laughs> says, why are you always against Nissan? Because I'm a mechanic who cares about his customers. Now, when I was a young mechanic, they called them Datsuns, and they were a combination of a good cheap little car, like a B210 Datsun that could run forever, hardly any horsepower, but they could go forever, or then they started making the sports cars, the 240Zs, the 260Zs, the 280s, they're great. Then they called them Nissan. Then in the year 2000, Renault bought a big stake, I think it's 51% or something of it, whatever, a whole bunch of it. Renault isn't that great of a company. They made Nissan go quality go down. Now you can see they're kind of on the verge of bankruptcy, and they lied about what they sold and stuff. Some of these people are being taken to court in various countries. The one guy was in Japan, then he escaped. I think he went back to uh, wherever he was from originally. I guess he was from the Middle East somewhere, Lebanon or something, and he snuck out of the country, and he's hiding there now. So it's not a well-run company, and they don't make well-built cars, and I care about my customers. If I was a crooked mechanic, I'd say, hey, yeah, buy Nissans. They're great cars. I'd make a fortune fixing them as they broke. I am not that way, and that's why I don't like them. Fernando Barajas says, what's a good truck? You can tow 7,000 pounds would be a family vehicle for under 20 grand. Well, it's going to have to be used here in the United States. Uh, you're really serious about pulling weight like that? Get a Ford diesel pickup truck, F-150 or F-250, whatever. Uh, towing diesels are made to tow. Gasoline engines are not made to tow. So if you really want to tow all the time, get a diesel engine. Get a Ford diesel engine. That's what I'd advise doing. Now, if you're only going to tow every once in a while, you get a Toyota Tundra, but you're going to have a hard time finding one for under 20 grand unless it's got a bunch of miles on it because they hold their resale value a lot longer and don't even think about Dodge their trucks are terrible as they age and you'd have to buy a used one Kingston says I got an 07 Jeep Patriot I put bottles of dye and I can't find the leak in my AC system all right odds are then your evaporator is leaking the evaporator is inside your dash you can't see inside your dash. Now, I could see inside your dash because I have various bore scopes, and they have thin little wires you can feed in. And if you, like, took the glove box out and fed it in past the blower motor, you could see, and you'd probably see it was leaking inside because the only thing you can't see is the evaporator because it's inside the dash. You could see if the compressor, the condenser, the hoses are leaking. Until the hoses go through the firewall, then they're going to the evaporator inside, and you can't see that. So odds are it's your evaporator evaporator leaking pretty typical on Jeep they make cheap evaporators they used to make them out of copper guess what they make out of them now they make them out of plastic and aluminum and they don't last long it's probably your evaporator any good mechanic we got sniffers and we turn out sniffers and it goes beep beep and when you stick it in if it's leaking it goes beep 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 beep, beep, beep. then you know the evaporator's leaking you got to tear the dash apart now one of those Jeep that's over a grand because they're poorly designed too they are hellacious to take apart and replace them Cameron Hibb says do you think the Bugatti Chiron is overpriced oh no you know I was thinking about buying three of them the other day <laughs> <laughs> you know, those are exotic cars. Anybody wants to buy one of those, and I guess, it always, to me, they always sound an Italian Bugatti, but I believe it's a French company, but it's an exotic car, and exotic cars are all overpriced. If you can afford that, go right ahead. People buy those kind of cars. What The question many people ask them is, what is your plane situation? Which means, how many airplanes do you also own? Because you probably got a bunch of other cars, too, so if you're in that ballpark, go right ahead and spend whatever 
whatever you want. It's your money. And you, if you're that rich, you probably gain the money through devious means. So then the Bugatti company can rip you off and get even. <laughs> Zizu says, what is the better car company at the moment? Honda or Mazda? Oh, I definitely say Honda. The Hondas are really well made. I mean, you can't beat Hondas versus Mazdas. Mazdas are getting better. There's no arguing that. But understand that Honda is the number one manufacturer of four-stroke motors in the world because they make them for all kinds of stuff, cars, trucks, and they make excellent engines. They make excellent vehicles. Mazda is getting better. I'll say that, but you can't really compare them to Honda still. The Hondas are still better made. Jesse Ward says, Scotty, hope you're well. I got an 06 Chevy Cobalt with 100,000 miles. I don't want to put a bunch of money, but it's my daily driver. Should I have the water pump changed? Well, as they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's not leaking coolant and it's still running and the temperature runs, leave it alone. You never know. I would change the coolant. It's got long life coolant. It's usually good for five to seven years, up to 100 something thousand miles, but you got 100,000. Change the coolant and the thermostat and then just see how long it lasts. It's not cheap to replace the water pump. And if it isn't broken, eh, leave it alone. They'll either leak or they'll start rattling when they wear out. Then yes, you got to change them. But if it isn't, eh, leave the stupid thing alone. Trudy Purnell says, Scotty, what's your take on a used Mazda 6, 2007, 150,000 miles for three grand? Way too much money for the car. That's a 13-year-old Mazda with 150,000 miles. Heck, I paid $3,000 for my wife's Lexus that had 60,000 miles on it. There is no way I'd pay that kind of money for a Mazda 6 with no warranty. If... It still runs okay, and if a mechanic checked it and said it was okay, offer them a couple of grand, and if they take it, great. If not, look elsewhere. It's not worth a penny more than that, and I wouldn't pay that either. Filipino Car Guy says, Scotty, my friend's thinking of an 04 Honda CRV or an 04 Toyota RAV4. Both are manual transmissions. Okay, well, your friend is a very intelligent person. He picked the two best smaller SUVs you can buy in the world. They both have standard transmissions. They're both excellent vehicles. Tell him, basically, drive them. See which one he likes. The Honda's a little faster. The RAV4 might last a little bit longer, but the standard transmission CRV back then in 04, they didn't have any kind of oil dilution problems back then. Those are both excellent excellent vehicles. Just see which one he likes and what prices he can get them for. Because they're both excellent vehicles. I mean, you really can't go wrong with those. See us. God says, Scotty, our Suzuki Jimmy brand new reliable. I'm not in the USA and I want cheap off-road. Well, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the rest of the world likes them. They had tons of those things when I went to the uh, British Virgin Islands and the U.S. Virgin Islands. They rented them. Little bitty Jeeps. I mean, heck, some of those islands are a mile wide and 12 miles long. You can't go that far. The speed limit was 20 miles an hour. And people love them. And they should parts for them. In the United States, no, forget it. You know, they don't sell them new anyways. And, and they pulled out because people did not affect them. You couldn't get parts for them. But the rest of the world, you want a cheap, they're little bitty cars. You get it cheap enough, go right ahead in other parts of the world where you can get parts for them. Euphrain Economy says, Scotty, which car should I buy between a used Toyota Tacoma 2013 and a Ford Ranger considering the cost of maintenance? Now, you're going to be able to buy that Ford Ranger for a lot cheaper than a Tacoma. There is no arguing that prices are high sky, high used. The Tacoma is going to break down a lot less than a Ford. Yes. But let's say you had to pay twice as much for the Toyota than you would for the Ranger. If they both had the same mileage on it, maybe you'd go for the Ranger because you're paying half the price. But if you just don't care and you want something that's going to last the longest and have the cheapest maintenance, you need the Tacoma by far. But a lot of times you can get the Ranger so much cheaper. And if they're still in good shape, you save a bunch of money. So that you decide. And of course, you got to check either one out with a mechanic if you're not a mechanic. Trust no one. When you're buying a used cars, people like cheat and steal when they're selling used cars. You need a mechanic to check out to tell you the truth. Any used car, you don't know if it's wrecked, flooded, or stolen. Jeffrey Craven says, I got a 200 Chrysler. The AC compressor clutch doesn't kick in. How do I check it? All right. First thing you want to do is check the fuse, make sure it's not blown. Check the relay, maybe get another relay, plug it in. Now, if that's not it, then you got to put a gauge on the low pressure side to see if you have pressure. If the pressure is out and it goes to zero or there's hardly any pressure at all, the computer knows it from its pressure switch and it won't turn it on when there's no pressure in it. So it could be you got a leak. Realize that a Chrysler 200 is mainly a Fiat built vehicle and they don't make them anymore. They were junky cars. Very easily it could be a refrigerant has leaked out from poor Italian quality. So check the fuse first on the relay and then see if it's leaked out. If it's leaked out, then you're going to have to find the leak and that's always fun. 
Kevin Capuza says, Hey, Scotty, Kevin from Ontario, Canada. I bought a 2018 Toyota Tacoma. Did I make a good choice? I think I did. You know, they're well-made vehicles. Hey, you're in Ontario. Hey, you're a hockey player. You can throw all the sticks and everything, equipment in the back. <laughs> My son's got one. He bought a new one a couple years ago because uh, I was going to get him a used one. He said, heck, why should I even buy with a used one? He says, these things last 20, 30 years. I'll just buy a new one and drive it forever. So that's what he did, too. It doesn't matter if you get a four-cylinder V6. They're very dependable either way. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.